Hey folks, today we're gonna to do an over the shoulder view of me setting up my personal tuning rig on site at a gig. A lot of the videos where I'm showing you things on site, uh, things are already ready to go, but I wanna start from literally square one. My Pelican is not even open about how I think about gathering gear and connecting my system from scratch with my current rig, the one that I use on every show. So we're not gonna be diving into measurement and analysis itself, but I'm gonna get us from we show up to the venue all the way to the point we would start taking measurements so you can see that set up from scratch. So to give you a little bit of the lay of the land, the first thing I did was gather all my equipment so I'm not having to unpack something and go get it. So I've got my Pelican with my gear right here. I've got my long XLR cables and these are my personal ones that I bring with me to run out to each of my microphones. I've got my computer for measurement. And I've also got four mic stands right here. So I've got them ready to go at the height that I'm going to use them at head height and a couple other smaller extension XLRs if I need them. So first thing is first, make sure you have everything gathered. Uh, you can learn this from mise en place. It's a French cooking term. They like to have everything close at hand so you're not running all over the place. So I like to do that first. All right, so if we come over here, let's check out the Pelican. Uh, and this is what I bring with me and we're gonna get start getting stuff out. So all my gear here, we're gonna need our microphones. I keep this in this handy little travel case. This is actually a cigar humidor case or a travel humidor. I got my measurement microphones right here, all four of them. So I'll have those nice and ready for me. I feel like em Emerald Lagasse right now. I need more bacon fat. So got my little measurement interface here. I'll connect that. I keep in a separate little pouch that I have labeled all my mic clips and my cable to connect my interface. I've got a short one that came with it and I also bought a longer one just in case my interface has to live on the other side of the desk. So let's go with the longer one today, just for fun. Got, these are all color coded. If you haven't seen them in other videos, I like to keep everything congruent. So this is my measurement cable with green, this with green, and the microphone with green. Um, and if I had time and I was tuning, you know, going uh, to multiple venues with the same rig, I'd put a bunch of tape on the mic stand itself. And then this lines up with my trace in Smart. So it's this cohesive system. I stole this from Michael Lawrence. It's been really helpful to me. Uh, the human brain registers colors quicker than we do numbers or other symbols. So I like working from that. So now that I've got all this here, let's start making some connections. Uh, in this venue today, I'm gonna to be starting with uh, verifying my microphones here. So uh, I've made this mistake. I, I start putting out my mic stands and like, wait, I need to verify my microphones. So we're gonna keep them all right here. So let's connect to my interface. I'm gonna open up my computer here and I'm gonna connect my Evo 8. What I like about this interface two or three main things. It's nice and compact. It's got four mic preamps and it's bus powered over USB-C. You can use USB-C to type A, but you only get phantom power to the inputs. Um, so I like being able to have the USB-C on this machine. My handy dandy MacBook Air, it's the 2020 M1. It runs smart like a champ. I'm happy about it. So those are my connections to my interface. Now let's throw some microphones on the stands. So when I'm doing this part, when I'm thinking about uh, getting my measurements ready. I, of course, want to verify my microphones here at front of house first. And why do I want to do that? I want to make sure I'm getting the same data from every single microphone. Mine are the EMX 7150s from I ISIMCon. They have very low variance from unit to unit, but I use them on a lot of the gigs to get thrown around on my Pelican. And so I want to make sure they're giving me all the same data. So I'm going to throw them all here on my mic stands. And I go in the same order every time, green, orange, pink, yellow, or gopi. G-O-P-Y, and that's the same order of microphones I have in my software. So I throw them up here on my mic stands. I've got them all ready to go at the same height. It's also a good idea to use boom stands that have a tripod leg instead of straight stands uh, because I don't want this to fall over. So if I have a wider base and someone hits it, uh, these smack the grounds. Uh, uh, I've had someone knock over, I think it was this orange microphone and it did smack the ground and it's fine. So I know that they're resilient, but going with a tripod stand um, is definitely a good choice. So I've got my pink microphone now, throw that one up here. I actually got a little bit of battery acid on my mic stand. It's a long story, I'll tell you later, but it still works. 
So while I'm setting these up, I'm also thinking about after my verification, where it's gonna be my first mic position. And that's almost always with my main system or what, or my, that has high and low frequencies and that's covering the biggest area. So in this room, it's gonna be on axis or in the center of the room. I'm gonna place them front to back, first row, back of this area, here in front of the house and back over there. So I'm just kind of making a tuning plan in my head. And so I'm not the greatest multitasker in the world. I'm actually really surprised I'm able to talk to you and set up my microphones right now. But uh, that's, I'm, if I'm thinking ahead, that's the case when I get these here. So if I have someone working with me, I would then they would basically be my mic runner or I'd be their mic runner and have them run smart um, so I can help teach them what's going on. So I got these already here in my order, green, orange, pink, yellow. Again, these, you don't have to have these microphones. You could have something, uh, the Rational Acoustics RTA 420, which is really similar to the DBX microphone. Uh, I like these because they're accurate and are gonna hold up for the, the long haul. They're really well made. There's low unit to unit variance. There's a lot more elect, uh, EMI rejection. Uh, but all that being said, anything's gonna work. So even if you just have one microphone, still go through these steps, think through where you're plugging in through. through. Um, we'll go from there. So I want to verify microphones. So I'm going to connect them here. So input one is A in my smart software. So I'm going to connect it here and get it to my microphone. Connect it and go to my next microphone. Get to have them in the order, green, orange, pink, yellow. And I'm doing all this to show you that it doesn't take that much time to get this rig set up, even with four microphones that aren't wireless. Um, and I would also think about if you don't have much time, always verify before you tune. And what does that mean? I'm checking the polarity of the speakers. I'm checking their orientation. I'm making sure the drive levels are same between the uh, uh, speakers of like type. Um, it's some people confuse system tuning with just EQing speakers, but there's a lot more steps before that. EQ is the last step of the process after we've got the right speaker in the right place, pointed in the right direction, um, aimed correctly, set at the right level, timed aligned with the rest of the rig, and then we EQ it. So again, I like EQ just as much as the next audio human, but it's not the end all be all. We need to make sure we have polarity right, level setting, all going there first. So I've got these here, not, my, not doing myself a huge favor with cables at the moment. I think this one got wrapped left-handed last time. But connecting my microphones here. And last one. These are all 100 footers. I got them from EWI or audiopile.net. Um, these other shorter 25 footers I've had for 12 years. They've been, 20, they've been great. And so I ordered these from them they've been a good choice for me. And these fly with me in my luggage suitcase if I go do a tuning rig, um, just so the venue doesn't have to have them because sometimes I'll ask for 400 foot cables and I get 40 10 foot cables, which is not a lot of fun to string all together. So I think it's a good idea to invest in these. And the reason why they're royal blue is that I know that they're mine. They're very easy to spot. And so that's why I also like the color coding. So I've got my fourth microphone coming right here. We're plugged in. Now I'm just gonna place them, point it at my main speaker, roughly in the same spot. And this is my first step here. And just basically wanna see that they're the same. So now I'm gonna come over here. You can see I'm gonna fire up smart. Got Smart Suite going. I could do this in Smart LE as well. I'm gonna continue this configuration. I had this from last time. I'll hide this. I wanna make a new session folder. So I'll call this uh, GPC mic test. And here we are. If I go to option A, I can look at my IO config. I've already named these mic A, mic B, mic C, mic D. Um, and this is also if I have a Q-Bus running in for my console. So this is what I've already done. So just pulling up a past configuration. And I have my outputs of the left output here going to my console, 
and then I have my loop back input, which is going to be my loop here. And this is specific to this interface and then enables me to use all four inputs on the interface instead of having to sacrifice one for an analog loop back. So I'm going to launch now the Evo software, which controls this guy. I'm going to turn on phantom power, crank my preamps all the way up. It doesn't have to be all the way up, but that's usually what I end up doing since I, I can get a nice strong signal level. Shift E, and that brings up my input meters, and I could see here in Smart that I've got level here in all these microphones. I'm gonna hit play, and I see my measurement level coming in. Fantastic. So one more cable I need to connect is the output of my interface to my DSP or the console. So in this case, I don't have a direct input on the DSP itself. So I'm gonna come here from the Evo, just the main out, and I'm gonna run it over here. And today I'm on a Yamaha CL3. I'm gonna walk over, plug it in, find a channel here. This is Omni Input 5 that is open. I'll come into here. I'm gonna go over here to this channel that I'm gonna commandeer because there wasn't an open one. The input port, I'm going to change here to Omni in 5. I want to make sure and bypass any processing that's on the desk, so I'm going to zero out the EQ, turn off any sends. I made sure and saved a separate scene, so I'm not doing anything here. I want the high-pass filter off as well. It's not being sent anywhere else. I'm going to turn the analog gain down right here. So now this is my pink noise signal. I'll go here and relabel it. Let's go to magenta. I'm just going to call it OSC for oscillator. And that's coming in. Now let's go back over to smart. I'm going to fire it up. Make sure this is down and muted so I don't blow up anything. So I've got input meters. I'm going to hit G to turn my generator on. Make sure the output level on my interface is there. I see it on the loopback input. I see that my mics are getting level. I got my generator at negative 18, which is going out. Uh, great. So now we need to get it coming out of the system. So we're going to come over here to the console. I've got the oscillator coming in. I've unmuted it. I've made sure the PA is on. I just have the mains on. The subs are off. I go here. Got my signal in the room. And now I'm going to make sure I got meters over here in smart. Let's come over here. I can go over here to track all that turns on the delay finder for all my inputs. And now I can see my impulse response is latched on here at all of them. And they're all similar delay times. And I'm gonna stop talking so I'm not messing up the measurement. Hit V to reset. Mic Verify, I've captured all the traces. They all look the same from a level perspective and phase perspective, so I know my mic's working correctly, this main works, and now I'm ready to start tuning. All right, that's from ground zero, getting everything out of the Pelican, connecting all together, getting it to our PA, and now I'm off to the races where I can start moving mics around and tune the system. Hope this is helpful to see you step by step, the gear that I actually use and what I'm thinking about when I'm talking through. Um, I got a resource for you at the link below, my audio toolkit that has a bunch of stuff in there, it helps you out with live audio. Uh, my name is Michael Curtis, thank you so much for watching.